Welcome to Boris Effects Live. Sponsored by Dell Precision Workstations. Create without limits. And by NVIDIA. And Intel. Hello, 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 and welcome to Boris Effects Live. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and thanks very much for joining us today, where we're going to be joining our friends, uh, Action VFX, to do some uh, pull down, or breakdown shots uh, with the Boris Effects software. So, this is going to be a very, very fun stream, everyone. Uh, so, strap in, get settled down and uh, we are going to be taking you through some big big shots and giving away some big big prizes as well so if you want to join in the action we are live so if you're watching on boris effects live or on youtube and you want to uh, ask some questions then get your fingers tapping in the uh, the chat window and uh, we will be there to ask your questions to our guests or if they're a bit more sort of product related, we will answer them live in chat as well. If you want to help uh, or want to join in the competition to win some of the uh, the big prizes we have today, then it's a good time to head over to BorisEffectsLive.com. Then if you scroll down the uh, bottom of the window, you will see the uh, the little competition entry form down at the bottom there. Look at that. That's where it is. Looking lovely. So you just fill in your uh, fill in your details there. Check out the uh, the full terms and conditions as well, and you could be in line for winning some of the big prizes. So what have we got today? We have got a twelve month subscription of the Boris Effect Suite. So that's everything that we make, including uh, Sapphire, Continuum, Mocha Pro, Silhouette, and Optics. Uh, we're also going to be giving away a 12 month subscription of Sapphire and a 12 month subscription of Continuum, a 12 month subscription of Mocha Pro. Stop it. And not to be, I can't, I can't stop it. Do you know why, Brian? Why? Because I've also got three Action VFX certificates to give away as well. So obviously, we've, we have our, uh, our friends from Action VFX over, and they have very generously giving us uh giving us three two hundred dollar certificates for uh some action vfx stuff so uh, we'll, we'll talk about more uh, uh well yeah what action vfx are in just a in just a moment obviously uh but you can see them there before we get into that i do want to say thank you to our sponsors for helping us to uh run these live streams nvidia dell intel Thank you very, very much. We've been uh, going strong for over a year now, uh, and I'm very, very happy to keep this ball running. Uh, that's not that's not the phrase. Get to the next slide. There we go. <laughs> Thank you to Hell Precision Workstations, the number one workstation brand in the world. I almost got through the intro there. Um, but of course, we can't do all this alone. In Mission Control, I have Brian Fox. Hello, Mr. Brian Fox. Hey, Ben. Welcome. Hello, everyone. Good, good to see everyone again. Thanks for joining us. Super excited. We got a fun one today. This is some cool stuff. I don't, know if, I don't know if you guys saw the slides in the open, but um, Caleb and Danasa from Action VFX created some really cool shots um, with some of their own custom elements, Sapphire, Continuum, and Mocha in there. We're going to break it all down. So this is going to be definitely a fun one. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. So, um, yeah, we are with with Action VFX today. Um, if you don't know Action VFX, they are a stock library for VFX assets. So they're they're sort of like the the go to uh, library for um, you know elements uh, like explosions, fire. Uh, I think they've got some watery, splashy stuff. Oh, there we go. Uh, you know, blood splatters, all that sort of all that sort of fun stuff. And they've also got. Uh, some new things, which I'm, I'm sure we'll be talking about later, uh, with some some crowds as well. So I'm excited to to uh, to get to have a look at that and talk about that a little bit. But should we just uh, should we get on with it, Brian? I think let's we should. Let's um let's let's have a little playback and and see some some action VFX stuff before we bring in our uh, before we bring in our guests.
Very cool. Now, I could also, you know, always uh, talk about action VFX, but I think I'll leave it to our two guests. So hello to uh, Dinesha, uh, Dinesha, sorry, uh, Assad and Caleb Friday. So hello, Dinesha and Caleb. Hello. Welcome Thank you for having to, us. Uh, to Boris FX Live. Yeah, thanks. Thank you for so, having us. Um, Caleb, can you can you tell us a little bit about uh, Action VFX? Yeah, sure. So we are a stock footage company uh, specialized in VFX assets. I um, mean, for years now, we've been kind of known as the top industry standard for VFX assets. Uh, we shoot them on, you know, raw red files. We have them on the site for you to download and do whatever you want with them. And we're used in all kinds of uh, movies and TV shows across the industry, as well as people everyday people in their households and hopefully some watching right now uh, we're available to everyone so we just try to always keep raising the bar in terms of what we can do at this company and what we can do for the vfx industry and the filmmaker industry and uh yeah i'm sure we'll talk more about some specifics but that's in general what we like to do and just help as many people as we can with their videos fantastic yeah and we'll, we'll definitely be uh be looking at, at some more of the elements and talking about how they you know how how they're put together uh, and how you can start to use them uh, as we as we go through this uh, go through this session i think so um dinesh though, we're, we're going to start with uh, with you i think i think uh, probably yes. a good idea is to um to kind of break down what we're going to be doing today we're going to be looking at two shots uh, one from you and yeah. one from uh, one from caleb and yes. just seeing yeah. how you've you've used uh, action VFX elements and, and the Boris FX software together. Yeah, sure. So I'm going to share my screen and sharing my screen. Whoop. Can you see my screen? Can see your screen. Okay, awesome. So what we are going to do here today is I'm going to break down this shot uh, that I did. Um, using Boris FX um, plugins and also some action VFX elements here. As you can see with the smoke here, I'm using action VFX um, energy burst element. And then for the uh, for the Boris FX uh, plugins, I'm using the ultra low and ultra zap from the Boris FX Sapphire. Uh, so this is the um, original shot, the backplate. Uh, so basically, I'm uh, I'm tracking uh, the face here and also the neck using uh, Power Mesh, Mocha Pro Power Mesh, and then I'm using that uh, that Power Mesh to, of course, get the data of the skin, like stretching and walking around, and then uh, I added uh, uh, some uh, ultra zap to get like the veins here, like the blood vessels, the veins. FX and then I also use of course ultra glow to get uh, the glow uh, from basically the like a subsurface glow from inside the person. So uh, here is the composition of the shot here. So as you can see here, we have the energy burst here. Um, I have four of them. I'm actually using uh, two uh, two types of energy burst. Uh, we have around we have several's. And here I'm using the Energy Burst Angel uh, 3, Angle 3, and Angle 9 from Action VFX Energy Burst to basically simulate uh, like smoke. So like the energy burst is, you know, it's kind of like overheating inside the person. And that's why he's screaming because it's probably painful, I think. <laughs> and, um, so I'm uh, using uh, that uh, to basically simulate the heat. And then... Uh, here, of course, we have the uh, veins effect. If we solo this, and you see it's uh, all black, but that's fine. If we go inside here, so oops, sorry about that. So here in the um, inside of the composition of the uh, of the energy, here I'm using. Uh, so I've tracked uh, the plate using Mocha Pro Power Mesh, and then I basically stabilize it. And then I'm using a couple of uh, ultra zap here and to basically get uh, like the organic uh, veins effects. 
And then there is this uh, occlusion math uh, that I did, uh, which is basically because um, to basically to integrate uh, the uh, veins into the character, I'm using the color, classic color dodge. And basically the, what, what it does is basically it lightens up like the bright colors and then getting rid of the dark. So that's why I'm using this um, occlusion map here. So, uh, sorry, occlusion mat, which is basically just a solid that I drew, I drew to basically get rid of some parts that I don't want, uh, so, like maybe some, uh, you know, some fractals that I don't want uh, in the final com. And of course here I'm using fractal noise uh, for the skin effects. And yeah, uh, so I'm going to show you the, uh, the Mocha Pro, the, I mean, the track that I did here. So I'm opening up. Okay, so can you see the Mocha? Is it showing yep. in the stream? Okay, it is. It's awesome. good. Yeah, so here is the Mocha Pro. Um, I'm, of course, using the Power Mesh. I'm using the uh, uniform, uh, like uh, the uniform mode, uh, because uh, that's uh, when I try it out, it's like the best, uh, give me the best result. And then, um, and then I also, the mesh size, I set it to 15, which is a lot, it's quite a lot but it gives me really, really good, um, like, uh, deformation. Like for example, here with the, we disable this, with, uh, this part of the neck here, like this muscle, and it actually captures that. And it's, I was like, I was mind blown when it just shows that it really captures the muscles, like, uh, you know, tensing around there. And then, yeah, I'm also tracking here. So I, I track around uh, like the side of the face and also like the neck. And I also grab a little bit part of the shirt, uh, but I didn't really use it. It was just like as an extra, you know, like an extra grid, uh, just in case if I need it. And if we disable the mesh, uh, this is basically the spline that I use to basically, uh, to basically I first uh, generate uh, the mesh. So what I did uh, the first time is I would, uh, of course, draw like a shape of uh, of uh, basically what I want to track. And this is just a, a really rough approximation. But and then basically from here I would uh, generate the mesh, and then uh, I would uh, so let's enable this. I would uh, generate a mesh, and then when the mesh basically is generated, I would uh, again track it. And then after I track it, I would, uh, what I did is I actually uh, modify the spline. Which why you see there's a bunch of uh, keyframes here uh, to basically works as a mat. So uh, from just one, this one layer, I'm able to get like the track of the uh, mesh warp of the skin, and then also the mask of the mat of the face uh, to basically uh, cut out my uh, veins, my energy effects. So if we, I'm gonna go, we're gonna go back here. So here uh, I'm gonna break down again with the this composition, which includes all the uh, the veins here. I have the Mocha Pro, which uh, basically I set to stabilize warp. Uh, uh, because uh, that's uh, uh, what I did to basically get the track. And then I also added some blur to the to the effects to, of course, um, make it uh, more, oh, sorry, make it more uh, blurry, not too sharp. And then I use some ultra glow, which I really love here to get the glow. And it's, this is, Ultra glow is just really great here. Uh, we have a lot of like settings here for the brightness and the threshold. And then we also have this circle here, which is super cool where you, if you basically just play around with uh, the circle, it would change the glow, the width of the glow. So you can do it using numbers or if you're more a visual person, you can just use this. And then this red here, this red uh, circle is basically to, um, 
uh, the, uh, to uh, modify the width of the red color and then there's also green and then blue so it's all separated into RGB but if you want to play around with the whole glow you can play around with this uh, circle in the middle there so it's uh, really cool so if we disable the ultra glow this is what we have which is uh, just rectal noise with a classic color burn so if we put this to normal it'd be like this and classic Sorry, classic color touch. Um, and yeah. And then also Ooh, we're gonna oh, go before before we move sorry. before we move forward. Sorry. Sorry. I just yeah. got there like this is this is really good and there's there are so many questions already. Sure. Um, so this sure. is this is great. Oh uh, like yeah. one of the one of the big ones was uh, can we pop back into Mocha Pro again yeah, for a second? Sure. Oh sorry, Mocha Pro, yeah. Just while this is playing back, I mean, one of one of the questions was, uh, you know, why not track the entire face for the initial track? Um, you you track. Oh yeah. Uh, sorry, I opened the wrong. That's fine. So I'm going to open it again. Yep. Yeah, so uh, sorry. What was the question? Yeah. So someone wanted to know uh, why you didn't track the entire face. For the uh, for the initial track, why you why you actually went in and uh, made shapes around the eyes and the mouth? Oh, it's uh, I mean I could. It's just uh, for my uh, for my sh I already know where I want to put uh, my effects, so that's why I drew it uh, that way. But if you want to track like the whole thing, you could do that. And yeah, that's, yeah. So there's yeah, so no like a basically saving. Like, yeah, Save, saving time so really, the, isn't it? Because you 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 know you don't need yeah. it, so yeah, there's no point tracking it. Yeah, they uh, um, did some uh, you know uh, R and D for uh, doing the tracking, so I already know like where to track, and yeah, yeah. I mean that, and that's that's the other thing when you're approaching a shot like this, um, in regards to tracking, what what do you do even before you you know uh, track the shot? What's what's your sort of process uh, generally? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh, so my pro process is basically, um, I would do uh, uh, what is basically like a slap comp, like a uh, like a really rough uh, like a really rough comp of uh, blocking the elements of where I want it to be, and then basically from there uh, I would know like how much uh, do I need to track. And like, it's, do I need to track the whole thing? Can I do it manually? Do I can I just use automatic? So it's really good to before you start uh, because uh, tracking is one of the you know and doing compositing tracking is one of the earlier earliest thing that you do before you know you play around with the fancy stuff with the compositing stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. So what I like to do, what, what my process on doing VFX is, I would basically just drop in everything into the comp and you know, put in all the elements and then put in the fractal noise and do maybe even like a rough rotoscope and just get uh, like a like the feel of it. Just just to basically just to, you know, like uh, gauge how much do you actually need to do stuff. So that's what I did is uh, when I first uh, when I first did the shot, I would basically just drop in the fractal noise and then I would start uh, rotoscoping the fractal noise and just find like what uh, like the best like the best, uh, uh, you know, what would uh, look best most. And of course, then I found out like, that I want to do like just the side of it, you know, like a little bit of the neck and then uh, some parts on the forehead here. And then all, of course, like the the, uh, the cheeks. So yeah, that's that's just, that's my process is usually, I would uh, in, in the very early stage, I would do like a, uh, like a mock-up comp, like a slap comp. Yeah, before I start uh, tracking. Great. Yeah, I think that, and that that's something to kind of emphasize to uh, to some of the, the newer people watching is because the temptation when you've when you've got all of this is just to jump straight in, isn't it? Uh, and yeah. just yes. you know, you just by thinking a little bit more, you can save a lot of time uh, a lot further down yes. the process. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Sorry. That, yeah, those, because... those were the, the big the big questions to begin with. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. That was that was that was great. Sorry, I interrupted you there. 
Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 no worries. <laughs> um, yeah, it's uh, really good to, you know, not to just jump in and immediately do like the tracking or the roto because there are a lot of times when it happened to me that I would just jump into the roto and then turns out I didn't need to roto and I just wasted like hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's really good to, you know, just to do a mock up comp uh, or like a slap comp. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, so this is the shot here and with the ultra glow and then I said I did a classic color dodge and then we're gonna go inside the uh, the veins here and as you can see if we solo the background, here I'm using a guide layer for the, uh, for the plate here. For those who don't know, guide layers basically, uh, this plate would show up in this comp as a guide but it would not render out in here in the um, in the outside comp. So it's really, uh, really helpful. And for this plate, as you can see here, the person is kind of, you know, warped around, like something happened. And that is because here on the module render, I basically changed the stabilize to stabilize unwrap. And what happens when I uh, do that is basically it would stabilize my track. And that way I don't have to you know, worry about animating the uh, the other elements. And uh, so then I, I know like, you know, like the boundaries of the effects and if it's gonna go outside the face and stuff like that. So yeah, so this is getting unwrapped here and then getting wrapped in the outside comp here. And then we're gonna go one by one on the layers. Here we have fractal noise. And of course in the fractal noise, I set it to dynamic progressive and I inferred it because when I don't invert it, it creates this cloud, which is which looks really cool. It could look it could look really cool. If we let's see. Yeah, it could look really cool, but it's for my just preference. Um I just like the invert version more because it more it's more like uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's like a tissue. Like it's more like a tissue. Um like um uh, yeah, like a tissue, like a bone. And yeah, so that's what I wanted. And then for the ultra zap, I actually created three. So we have the first one here, which is, I'm going to disable the others. Here we have the uh, bottom one. And so ultra zap is really, really cool. I really liked it. And uh, so basically it's uh, lightning, uh, it generates lighting effects. And then best part about this is that you have this controllers for your lightning, which is really helpful and really, really, just really cool. Like I have so many, like when I found out about this, I just like uh, my head just bursts with ideas because there's so many things you can do with this. And then of course the, the bolt itself, you can do so many things with it. And actually I'm going to just create a new solid. I'm going to, uh, let's just, I'm going to show basic what happens and ultra zap. I'm going to drop it in here. So here we have basically like the um, like the default uh, lightning here, and basically you can play around with the bolts. You can add so many different bolts, uh, sorry, many many diff uh, many bolts, and then you can play with the width. And then with the like the wrinkles here to make it more wrinkly, and then you can also you have the bolt animation so it animates. So you can you can turn it off uh, by turning off the wiggle speed, which is what I did. And then here we also have like the bolt uh, branchiness. So if we turn this on, uh, it would basically turn it into more like a branch effects. Uh, which you can play around with. And then you also have like a secondary, so I'll turn this on again. I have, so we have the secondary bolt. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, sorry about that. Uh, so there's, we have this secondary bolt here, uh, which is, it's not really visible yet, but if we turn off the ultra glow, so if we turn off the brightness here, if we, Turn this on, we have like a second bolt and the second bolt can be a different color. So that's really cool. And then the second bolt also has branchiness and also has animation. So that's 
really super cool. And then, yeah, and then of course, I just really, I just really, really like this, <laughs> this uh, spline thing that we can, you know, play around. Just really cool. I really love it. And then, yeah, and then we can change the like the composite maybe to zap only. So now it's just the zap. So you don't have to, uh, so you don't have to screen it or add it. You can just do it in here with like uh, zap only. So yeah, that's uh, ultra zap. So for this ultra zap that I did here, is I basically I created. Um, sorry, uh, I created uh, like a 10 bolts, so there's a lot of them. And then I turn off the animation. And then for the bolt uh, structure, I added some secondary bolts to basically just to populate uh, the skin here. And then I, of course, I turn off the ultra glow, and then I use mesh warp to basically help uh, get that. Um, uh, get the ultra bolt to match the curvature of the face. So that's why I use uh, a mesh warp to just sort of like give it a little bit more push. And of course I use a fill to basically turn it into black. Uh, that way when we go to the comp, uh, sorry, let's turn out the fractal noise. If we go to the comp, uh, because uh, the color of, uh, because of the color, because it's black, it would uh, basically uh, get erased by the classic color dodge. So yeah. And then here we have a secondary ultra zap, which is just a more of the like a smaller, I don't know if this is uh, visible in the stream, but it's more like, like the smaller branches, like uh, what I'm thinking is more like, like the smaller blood vessels, you know, so we have the main artery here which I know is some of you probably study biology, probably wondering like, this is not scientifically accurate, which I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, VFX. Unfortunately, I don't have a degree in biology, but anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is not scientifically accurate, but it looks cool. That's what's important in VFX, as long as it, look, as it looks cool. And, so we have the mini branches, which basically simulates like the smaller branches, like the smaller uh, blood vessels. And then we have another one on top. So there's another big, uh, like a big bolt uh, that is basically like heading towards, you know, the eyes there. So yeah, and then we have the occlusion map, uh, which uh, I've mentioned uh, earlier is basically just to basically to map out some of the areas that I don't want. And for this, if we turn on the road, I actually used it to basically like a simulate uh, a, uh, like a jawbone here, like a skull, you know? So if we go to the main comp here, so it's not all like, uh, it's not too even like the effects. So there's, I'm trying to make like an impression of like a jawbone here and then the cheekbone. So that's what I did with the um, occlusion mat, which which is essentially just like a like a black uh, solid color, and then you know we can play around with the opacity. With the the darker it is, then the more matted out, like you know, the more erased it is in the front comp. And so you yeah. do know some biology. So I do know some biology, yeah. Uh, mostly because <laughs> uh, I'm I'm one, I think. <laughs> Um, I've only been on this earth for several months, so I'm still learning about human anatomy and yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, I, ha so I have, here, I have to pop sorry? in Vanessa. I have to pop in with this anecdote. If we're talking biology, Carl Sims who okay. wrote <laughs> Sapphire was like a geneticist biology expert at heart. Oh, wow. Like he was always fascinated with these. So a lot of the underlying algorithms in Sapphire are named biology terms which will send really? a send a junior developer panicking <laughs> panicking upon <laughs> upon diving into sapphire the first time and seeing like why is this called the genome <laughs> so, well because carl was uh that's before he wrote sapphire he did a bunch of um modern art pieces he did a bunch of like computer art with ah. genetics and stuff and kind of um you know growing single cellular structures into complex ones and kind of funky stuff, wow. but, but keep going. No one wants to hear me talk. Great job. Love seeing you use ultra zap <laughs> like this. 
love seeing Ultra Zap in, in an artist's hands. Like, um, I would have never thought to make a black Ultra Zap. Right? So that's awesome. Uh, love love yeah. seeing that. So keep keep going. Yeah, it's it's really cool. Like, I have so many other ideas that I want to do with Ultra Zap. It's just so great. And yeah, anyway, so um, this is the, of course, I've already talked about the energy burst, uh, which um, here I of course uh, blurred it out and uh, there's also like the sapphire blur which you can use and also caution blur and then here is i use the uh, hue and saturation to basically you know uh in the so the original color of this uh solo this so the original color of the oh okay so i don't know if it's visible so okay so yeah. it's a, yeah okay so this uh it's supposed to be in a more better uh high quality maybe because of the stream uh but uh essentially uh it's originally in this blue color which you can easily change using hue and saturation so uh so like all the energy burst that you can get on action VFX effect is customizable the color so you can change it very easily using hue and saturation so, yeah, and then, oh, yeah, one more thing I forgot to mention. And for the energy burst, uh, basically, I tracked it into a null here in the middle, which is uh, actually, the null is generated from the power mesh of the, um, of the uh, you know, the, the track that I did. So if we go to the power mesh here, and if we create nulls, it would basically create a bunch of, like, hundreds of nulls that are basically based on the like the grid that you did on uh, Mocha and basically the grid would uh, be turned into nulls which is great so I basically take one null that is over here uh, I, I want to try to create the nulls but it may slow down my computer but I'm just going to do it so if we click it nulls and it's going to take some time but it's going to work it's really cool yeah, it's, it's going to take some time because you've got hundreds of... Uh, yeah, I have you, hundreds. You made the mesh yes, size really tiny. <laughs> yeah, yes. But look at that. Oh, look at that. It's looks, it looks really great, right? It's so many things you can do here. And basically, I just pick one. Um, again, that's... I have so many <laughs> nulls here, which I only <laughs> needed one. And... Yeah, and then I use that one null to basically track in the energy. And yeah, yeah, I just really love all these Mocha Pro and the Ultra Glow, Ultra Zap. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's a, a very shot. cool feature of um, of uh, Mocha Pro uh, with the power mesh is that a lot of a lot yeah. of people are using power mesh to do the distorts and yep. not sort of realizing that you can actually take out those those nulls as well that's I'm, I'm very glad that you uh not only found that but have uh, have used that to to some good use here that's great yeah yeah it's it's really, really good, yeah it's really uh, helpful if you want to you know if you want to track your face and then maybe you want to add like a graphic on the side and then you don't necessarily want the graphic to get warped you just want to track the position create nulls from the power mesh be really you know will be really helpful yeah that's wonderful yeah so. that's wonderful cool yeah I think so that's we'll, um, shot yeah yeah I, th I think that's great i mean how how long were you working on that shot this this is this is a question from uh from chat how how long were you working on this shot uh not long actually especially with the with the stuff that we got with the sapphire stuff it's it takes it's really quick like i can uh do this in like uh, 15 minutes half an hour especially with the ultra zap you know and the ultra glow it, it makes the work you know it get get like a really good effects really quickly basically that's what i'm really wanting to say and nice. so yeah that uh that's really helpful because you know if without the ultra zap i would probably need to you know either find like uh i had to 
uh, go to the internet and browse and look for uh, like uh, like a vein texture or you know maybe create my own. But thanks with the you know thanks with the Ultra Zap, I can just do it really quickly and it's just really customizable and it's really good. Yeah. So yeah. One one of the other nice long, things actually. about. Uh... So that's great. I was going to say one of the nice things about being able to create your own veins is that you're not at the, the whim of the internet. Uh, I had to uh, do some some wound modeling at some point, and I thought it would be a really oh, good oh, idea no. to, to look on the internet for sort of wound reference oh, shots. No. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that was that was not that was not actually as good an idea as I thought. So so having something a bit more safe and controllable it would probably have uh, helped me out a little bit there as well. What, yeah. what I like about this shot is is the the sort of small details that you've you've gone into as well, like the like the um, like just the extra little uh, energy blasts that go on, and then what's happening with with yeah. ultra glow at the end of it. I think that looks really nice. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really. Yeah, I really love uh, Ultra Glow, Ultra Zap. Just, you know, when I first opened Ultra Zap and I saw like all the, like the splines, <laughs> I was just like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> yeah, I just really love this. I played around with this a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Brian, do we have yeah. any more questions from, from Mission Control? Um, sorry, I'm I'm still trying to wrap my head around how you got black, black zaps. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I I think you answered that. I think a, a lot of a lot of love on there for for Mocha for Mocha Pro Power Mesh, right? A lot of people are really yes. geeking out. I mean, I I love to see how you've combined Power Mesh with Ultra Zap too. Like Ben said, I don't know why, but in our first initial explorations with with Power Mesh, right, we're constantly obsessed with putting you know more graphics and tattoos on people so great to see that mm -hmm. um doing that crazy kind of veiny type approach is really cool um yeah i was wondering too the question from chad as to how long you worked in the shot um thank you for crushing my soul because i'm thinking like it's got to be six six twelve <laughs> hours right <laughs> like, you know like that's how long it would take me right and that's with zero distractions so probably like a real yeah. world two days but um but uh you are apparently a lot more skilled than i so that is that is that uh, was great to see. Yeah, well, actually, like a, like a fifteen twenty minutes after I've done like hours of R and D, you know. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Well, there that's, it goes. <laughs> that's after I spend like hours figuring out stuff. But after that, it's just you know because I because I've I've been with this shot for days now, so I've ha already have everything on the back of my head. Like it's all programmed in my chip here on my brain. <laughs> so it's probably gonna take like. 30 minutes but yeah yeah well great job great job always like great i said job. always Thank great you. to see these these tools and the talented artist's hands you know we we create them a vacuum and then we we, we think they'll be cool right <laughs> but it's great to see kind of out there <laughs> you you using it and going through the parameters and and kind of seeing seeing what it does so thank you for that thank you All right so I think, yeah, thanks, thanks to NASA. Uh, that was um, Thank you. that was wonderful. I think we'll uh, should we should we celebrate? I think we'll we'll celebrate now. You're, celebrate. Yeah, you're watching uh, Boris Effect live, uh, and we are going to be uh, well. We're joined by our friends at Action VFX, and you've just watched the first of two uh, VFX shot breakdowns. So while we take a little break and uh, and sort of wait for the next one to queue up. I think we should give some stuff away. Uh, and how do we how do we join the giving stuff away thing? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Competition. That's the word I'm looking for. How do we join the competition? Well, it's easy. You go to BorisFXLive.com. You scroll down to the bottom, and you will find a competition entry form with full terms and conditions about our competition. And you can win. Some big prizes. We have got a 12-month uh, subscription of the Boris Effect Suite. So that's everything that we make. So that's Sapphire, Continuum, Mocha Pro, uh, that we just saw here, uh, Silhouette, and Optics. And one lucky winner is going to be walking away with a 12-month subscription of Boris Effect Suite. 
we are also giving away three action vfx uh 200 gift certificates to uh to well to three lucky winners there uh we've got a 12 month subscription to sapphire a 12 month subscription to continuum and a 12 month subscription to mocha pro to give away as well so head on over to borisfxlive.com to join the competition oh i've got a couple of lucky winners already i think somewhere let's see if we can um pull some names out the hat the first winner is sandra gutierrez you have won a 200 dollars gift certificate to action vfx uh, so congratulations sandra well done on that uh, do i have another name let's rustle the bag around a little bit russell 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 and oh my goodness right dominic uh lapin you have won the 12 month subscription to sapphire so that's what we were uh, also having a look at in the in the previous shot so congratulations dominic i was i was desperately trying to queue up some applause but i i failed congratulations sandra and congratulations dominic great work um awesome gift certificate to action vfx and annual subscription to sapphire awesome stuff that's it so yeah we've we've still got a uh, a lot to come on this stream so if you're enjoying what you've seen so far and you're watching on youtube then uh just look underneath the video and click on that little thumbs up button for me if you wouldn't mind it costs you nothing it helps us out a lot it lets us know that you want us to keep these streams going it lets youtube know that you also find this stuff interesting as well um and that's that's all good for for everyone i think so without any further ado i think we should, we're going to head on over to our second shot with action vfx and we're joined by caleb hello caleb or welcome back i should hello. say mm -hmm. have things changed a lot since we uh, spoke uh, half an hour ago yeah i learned a lot from denas's demo it's amazing isn't it? <laughs> me too me <Yeah>. too <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, yeah hope, about hopefully it. we're going to uh, we're going to learn uh, more in the next half hour as uh, as well. So um, I think Brian, do you do you have the, uh, the the shot queued up? I do, I do. Let me go ahead and play it down. So I'll uh, take, so, yeah. take it away, Caleb. So Brian's put together a nice little before after white force. Uh, so yeah, this is kind of a, a cyberpunk type shot. I wanted to really start from the ground up using uh, action vfx products and boris fx products and plugins to see what i could create to really you know get in this world of like futuristic sci-fi cyberpunk awesomeness so this is the outcome you saw in the before so i will hop over into after effects and let me know everything's good there all right yeah we're looking good cool so i've just got this uh rendered out here in the first comp window but here's where all the magic happened uh, i've got quite a few layers going on here um it was good to start with like denasa said some pre-production and planning so if we look at the original shot um we worked out, I did a, a, a test comp as well, like a slap comp and with some stock footage because we shot this plate ourselves, but I did a, a test comp with uh, just some stock footage uh, with some similar framing to see what it would look like. So that was great to do and it really helped whenever it came to shoot this shot of our actress here to know how to position things, lighting. We did have to shoot this fairly quickly, but, and that's another reason to do tests is if we, get in production situations where you've got to work quicker than you want. You've done some planning and you know what you need to get done. So the first thing I did that really helped um, get us into the look was I added in an edge glow. So what this is, is it starts with a very basic find edges effect, the classic find edges, and I inverted it. And so it's picking up some of the edges uh, in our shot and then I added a tint effect. Caleb, yeah. could I can I just ask you to to reset yeah. for a second, please? It looks like we've lost your video. Oh. Uh oh. Okay.
Sorry, let me go ahead and oh, okay, we'll look back. Yeah, back. let me go ahead while you reset. Let me let me play this too. All right, let's try again. Okay. There we go. Let's try this. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Yep. Did not know. Okay, this should work better. So I hadn't actually done much yet. I was going over our original shot uh, and some of the pre-production, and then I'll show you, since you couldn't see it, I'll show you this edge goal layer. And so like I said, it's just the find edges effects, and then that picks up on these edges, and then you add a tint effect, and I kept the black mapped to black, and I mapped the white to this kind of scion blue effect that we like to set the mood, and then added just a normal glow for this one. And so that's a good way to start off a shot like this if you know you want that kind of look. All right, so let's go back here. So let's jump into some of the uh, the tracking and get into this uh, facial I'm cybernetic. Have to break in again, I think I think we've frozen uh, again. This really? Is, uh, okay. Yeah, it looks. This is like, this is the fun. This is the fun of live. Yeah, it looks like for some reason it's like your screen share is is dropping down to like like one fps which is odd okay. um maybe if you try to reconnect and throw your webcam on and then go back to the screen share that would be yep you were ahead of me cool all right let's try it now and while um while you're while you're setting up here um let me play some of these amazing crowd breakdown stuff you have. And maybe Danasa can tell us while Caleb's setting up about some of the stuff about the new kind of crowd breakdown stuff you guys have on Action VFX. Because I saw this and thought, yes, I can't tell you how many times people have asked this, right? Like doing large scale crowd replacements. Really, really great idea. And as far as I know, this stuff didn't exist anywhere on a stock footage site before Action. Is that is that fair to say? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, C Caleb, uh, I would have more, uh, uh ideas about, uh, you know, like the crowd sure. stuff, uh, uh, but, uh, the shot I actually did, um, another of the crowd shot, which is the stadium one. That is the one that I did. And yeah, this one. So this is the one that I did using the, um, sports crowd that we have. And it's just a uh, really great because we're able to because we have uh, all the crowds in uh, different angles and then they're also, you know, making different, many different movements. So I'm able to basically like randomize them and create this bunch of crowds in the stadium. And yeah, it's just, it's really great. You guys should check it out. It's really great. Especially, you know, with everything's going on with the COVID. <laughs> so you probably don't want to get a bunch of people and shoot them together because that's dangerous but with right. the crowd yeah great job great job vamping i love it all right let me i think caleb's back let me go ahead and uh switch back over there you go i see a mouse all i right. see a mouse right. i love it yay <laughs> i feel good about this one uh <laughs> nice i don't know what you did well, but congratulations <laughs> all right all right i feel good about this one so let's try again all right, where were we? Oh yes, we're gonna jump into some of the actual cybernetic enhancements that we created. So let me first turn off this kind of eye hologram here so we can see it. All right, so we have a few here. We have, first we have the, this cheek here, we have this cheek here, a couple bolts on the neck, and then this chest piece. So let's jump in here with, let's do one of the cheeks first. And I'll show you what's going on here. So bump that up to full res. So what it is, is go even deeper. And this is an action VFX gore texture. So if we look at the very core of it, it is a blood texture. I know you mentioned earlier about <laughs> some gore reference. Uh, these aren't too bad, uh, but if we look at what it started at, it's a really great base for adding skin enhancements because it's got all these nice edges. I ended up, of course, masking out the blood for this shot, but it's got a lot of great built-in things 
that even if you aren't going to use the blood or the, the whole gore shot, it's great to have this base and these edges. So I use the EXR versions of these, and we have them in PNGs as well. But what was great about the EXR usage is being able to pull out certain lighting things and reflection things that helped fit the shot that I needed this for. So you can see I kind of darkened up some of this naturally without having to do it with a color correction. And I took out some of the reflections. There's some still in there, but I took out some of the ones that you wouldn't see in the actual shot. So if you are familiar with uh, EXRs, you'll know just how useful that is. Uh, some things you can do with PNGs still, but it just saves so much time. So then we just masked out the blood and dropped in this cyborg texture. So we'll take a look at that real quick as well. So this is just a mask from a larger image. I can show you that image really quick. I've kind of used this for all of my cyborg textures in the shot and just masked out specific designs for each of the textures. All right, so you've seen what the base is for these wounds. So let's hop back over. Oh, I've also got some sapphire glow on this one. Not ultra glow, just the regular glow to really get a nice pop in the highlights. That's going to show off in the main shot. We equally love all sapphire glows on this stream. We love ultras <laughs> and we love, we love glow. Yeah, and don't worry, I use plenty of Ultra Go as well, but nice, nice. still got usage for the old ones uh, in the, the the more basic Sapphire Glows that are still in the collection. All right, so in this middle comp, I've just arranged them how we want to show them in the uh, in the final comp here. And I did the same for this other cheek, but now I want to show you the tracking process for this. So let's go down to the original plate here and pull up this face and neck track in Mocha. Boot up. All right. So I've got one layer here, uh, quite a few points, so I will zoom in. So what we've got is, just like the nauseous shot, I started out with a very basic X-spline. And I knew I was going to use some of the neck too, like for those bolts you saw. So I went ahead and tracked just outside of the face line and just around the neck. And then I started here, which is where our shot starts. And I didn't start in the middle. You know, in some tracks, you want to start right in the middle of the whole section. But for this shot, the beginning worked perfectly because her head tilts both ways, but it's in the center at the beginning. So I started right here. Um, and then I didn't change much else other than added in the perspective checkbox. Um, I didn't need some other great features you have, like the adaptive contrast or, you know, adjusting some of the size. The, the defaults worked great for this shot. I even tried some other ones just to make sure. But at the end of the day, the, the default for mesh size, minimum pixels used. Uh, of course, this was a 6K shot, so 20% of that was <laughs> plenty. But um, just to show you what this is doing, it follows her great through all of her head movements. So the actress tilts her head one direction, comes back to the middle, the other direction, even tilts forwards a little bit, and then comes back up right to center. So the mesh did great at trucking all that. I didn't even need keyframes for this, which is fantastic. And then let's go ahead and hop back out here. And I'll show you that in real time a little closer so you can see just how good of a job it did. Staying right on with there with what we wanted. So I will briefly show you these two little things here just because it has a couple of neat little extras. These uh, little neck bolts. Just another little trick you can do with these is this is another texture that I masked for this design. And then I added a sapphire uh, drop shadow. I really like the sapphire drop shadows for a lot of the blending I did on the final face compositing. And on this one, we do have circular blood and gore textures in that pack on the website. But I actually just used the polar coordinates for this to wrap the those edges around the outside of this texture. So I didn't even really need an inside for this. I just wrapped it around the outside. And I purposely left this little hole here. You can you can connect it if you want, but I like this because it kind of gives that hanging down in the skin look to it. 
So the same process for the AXR, but I just duplicated it and then added this texture in into the circular polar coordinates. A really great underused effect in After Effects if you've never used it. All right, let's hop back over here. So other than that, those bolts are pretty standard, but they tracked on great with the power mesh in my original track. But let's take a look at this chess piece. Um, there's a lot of really cool things going on here. I'm showing you this original, because I'm in quarter mode for this, to, just for the speed of the this demo. But if you look at this uh, chess piece, one of the great things I found while tracking this in was how I could use power mesh to track back in the plastic distortion that's overlaid on top of this. So let's go through that. So what do we have exactly? We have this, which is the key, not the key, I'm sorry, the, um, the pre-comp of our design, same as earlier, where it's a masked version of the sideboard texture. We've got some borders with the core textures. And then I've even added some glow here to make a subtle design in the end product using one some sapphire glow here keyframe to in and out so that shows up in the final uh, the final shot to get some detail but I want to show you the chest track on this so let's come back out here go to this key I believe this would be the correct one let's check it out Yes, okay. So I did one more power mesh track here. And I tracked around the edges. Of course, I didn't need any of this information. Um, probably could have saved time by making it smaller, but I wasn't sure exactly how the design was going to look when I tracked it. But you have that uh, leverage when you use this, this tracker, so you don't have to be exact. All right, so this is just another a simple power mesh track. But you notice I didn't include the keyed version. I did the plastic and the skin so that it would get both both kind of uh, textures both um, planar warping so let's go back out and I'll show you the key so you can see what's going on there so we come in here to the key we have a linear color key coming down on top of the original plate so it's keying out the skin to place this in here and then adding it back in underneath it and then when I added on the Mocha Pro chest key onto the Cyborg top comp, it applied not only the tracking to get the to get the piece to stay in place, but added on the plastic distortion as well. So I mean, of course, that would take so much longer if you didn't have something like Power Mesh track that plastic on top. That's that's cool. Could you could you there. solo out those couple of layers just to mm -hmm. so we can see what they look like just soloed? Yeah, this this layer is that what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. Okay, let's see here. I take a second to play back. That's fine. Yeah, it's just just so I want just to uh, to kind of emphasize how it's moving and uh and distorting around i think it's just yeah and this is in quarter res for the sake of speed but uh you can kind of see if i scrub along here some of the little distortion things that the plastic tracked right and just to be clear i did the exact same technique that also did in his shot which was once we got the track in mocha pro uh, rendered out into the stabilized warp on this. Yeah, you can see some of that plastic distortion as well as just, it's hard to see because of the, that uh, plastic trap uh, track, but uh, just some basic, very small and uh, subtle distortion that just her, her skin would have had. But uh, it's combining both of those since we tracked them both. So let's come back out here. Here is that um, color key. I can give you a little more detail on that. But that was just me um, eye dropping her skin to get a key of the uh, the skin color. And then I just 
missed a few little adjustments here, and then it was good enough, and it left intact the, I don't know if it'll show up all right. Yes, here we go. So it leaves intact the plastic on top so that we can add that back because we don't want to lose that for this uh, effect. So that was the chest key. So yeah, I think that was, I'll move on, but that was really one of my favorite parts of uh, using Power Mesh for this shot was being able to re-add not only the, you know, this thick plastic poncho texture, but to track in track in the uh, the warping and distortion that it naturally has as well. All right, so I will talk a little bit about what we have going on with our holographic kind of projection here. So let me go here and show you in real time what exactly was going on. It's got some crazy glitching going on. Um, let's hop into that comp and see what's happening here. So at the base, we've got a glitch effect. We've got sapphire scan lines, which was really handy for this. Add, adding in some some of that kind of you know that computeristic sci-fi look we wanted, and then some more glow and holographic elements. And then what we did in this pre-comp was, for the text, I'll show you guys a cool little trick, a little MoGraph tip if you're not familiar with it. On our text here, first of all, we have a Sapphire Edge Colorize, which is awesome for getting some of this uh, kind of specific colorization and then get it animated in there. And then I handpicked out the blue and pink to match our uh, color palette of our final shot. So that really is a subtle detail, but with subtle details, plugins can be super useful and products like action VFX products because they don't take too much time, most of the times to throw on there and see how it works to really improve your shot. And so we got these uh, texts that are automatically animating. So I'll just quickly show you, if you don't know about the character offset animation in After Effects, which is just a keyframe it in your settings and text settings then it will automatically change them throughout your timeline. So just a little MoGraph uh, tip, if you haven't used that one yet, it's pretty basic, but it comes in handy for a lot of these kind of sci-fi HUD um, compositions. And then we've got a simple mask here to kind of give sort of an, uh, some detail in the middle. Now, apart from that, it's just uh, kind of getting creative with the design of how you want this something like this to look. And then you track it on and it follows the actors perfectly in this situation. And so, yeah, it's it was something, when you have a very straightforward shot, we don't have a ton of camera, camera movement, right? So adding a lot of glitching and a lot of the scan, sapphire scan lines created more, you know, uh, intensity and kind of uh, just interest to the shot itself to have something like this in there. All right, and then let's get on to some more action VFX products that are really just tied together the shot as a whole. So if we take a look here, we've also got some smoke and fog here. Kind of, uh, you know, slowly setting the mood in the foreground and the middle ground here. And they've also got some electrical sparks from our electrical sparks collection on the website up in this light that are falling periodically and I'll show you how that is working. So I'll also show you we got some uh, foreground sparks that you probably noticed. We filmed these included them also for some bokeh. So I'm sure you saw those but uh, something like that is just great to really top off a shot. You know you, you don't have to really track in too much you just throw them on top because they're blurred out in the foreground. So that was nice to add. And I've got Ultra Glow on those. I've also got Ultra Glow on our regular sparks and on this entire top light. So I'll show you the, how that Ultra Glow is working here. Really liked how it uh, kind of blew it out to fit the final shot. Because when I shot this, um, it, of course, it didn't retain... It retained the details and highlights, and this is a, a red raw um, plate. 
So we can retain those if you need them, but I wanted to blow it out and keyframe it. So Ultra Glow was great for that, but still have that softness around the edges and within this mask to fit the shot still, because some glows would be a little harsh. They may not have that kind of futuristic, you know, soft palette to them. But Ultra Glow, I mean, it really just knocked out of the ballpark with that. Um, I also use that on her sides here. I'll show you that in a second. Let's go over these sparks. So let's take a look at the, the top sparks. I'll sew these out so you can see them. Let's take a trick of this back on here. And play back. Just to show you how easy it was to add these, the only thing I did to this was add a little blur, a little color correction, and ultra glow. And that's about it. And then, of course, I tracked them. Actually, these I didn't even need to track. I tracked in some other assets, but these, the way they fell, they were fine. Um, they ended just behind the actress. So, of course, you can make some small masks or roto if you need to. But, yeah, it just uh, super easy to add. And it was great for that kind of odd animation I did for that light. As you can see. Now let's go over some of the usage of Ultra Glow I did in the uh, with the fog in this kind of front foreground area. Let's see here. So one thing you'll notice whenever I did that initial edge glow effect was it kind of darkened up some other things. So I just masked in some color correction light. And Ultra Glow really did a great job of pushing that. Get a little more res here. Not only on the wall, but I wanted to include the side of the poncho as well, right? So you can see how that just softens up. And I kind of tracked it as, I mean, I keyframed it as well as she tilts her head to increase the brightness of Ultra Glow whenever she is leaning. Super easy to do, just, you know, two keyframes uh, timed with her head tilt. But that's, that glow was just perfect for setting the mood, especially on the poncho, this little clear plastic poncho. All right, let's take a look at a couple more see details how, here. How using, um, sort of see how using ultra glow and that's that sort of style of ultra glow uh, with the fine edges that you could really easily kind of just crank that up even further and, and get a kind of mm -hmm. uh, sort of modern, even more modern Tron. I was going to say even more modern Tron, but last Tron film was 10 years ago. So, okay, a modern <laughs> Tron. There we go. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. It's fantastic for that. And even you can see with some of the AE distortion, we're not going to drop down the quarter res. It's going to boost it, but it's fantastic for that. I mean, if you look at the, just some of the kind of almost feathering it does naturally. And of course, you can customize all that yourself, like you saw in Denos's demo. I did some of that as well. But just that natural look that you would want for a shot like this, that you can customize and make something you would see on, you know, any type of shot lit like this or even not lit like this. I mean... <laughs> Not hard to change to fit that, so yeah. And then let's take another look at this smoke and fog here. So if we break down these, I've just got two layers of fog. I've got some middle ground here to make some depth and some foreground fog. I went for a little more, uh, you know, stylistic color choice, but you could definitely keep the regular colors and you would still have a nice shot. But um, yeah, and I did some little bit of uh, distortion and rotation in 3D to match this the scene better. And after that, all it was was adding some glow to them and then tracking them into the shot. And that was, they were good to go. I did a lightened blend mode. A lot of our effects are pre-keyed on Action VFX, but some of them include a black background and you can just a lighten or a screen or you know an unmolt if you have that uh, but yeah 
that's all I really have to do to blend it into the shot itself and then adjust the opacity as needed. And then let's take a look at one more detail and then if we have any questions we can address those but just these little spaceships that I had going on. So if you look in the shots up here just want to add one more extra detail happening so I tracked in some you know, few spaceships flying across the sky. So very easy to do. First off you just want to key out this guy. So many times you don't even have to mask anything. Uh, for this one, I did mask a little bit because our light was very similar to the sky. So I just masked out some of the lights. But otherwise, I didn't even track the mask. I just come in here and then I added another linear color key, sampled out the sky color, changed a few things in the softness. And if you look at this, all it's doing is taking out that sky and I even adjusted the softness and the tolerance here so that it leaves some clouds so that when the spaceships are flying over there is some clouds in front of them as well but you could definitely get rid of those if you wanted to as well so another simple key then if we look at one of the spaceships I'll just show you what's happening with those very simple animation added some uh, native AE motion blur uh, I think I used, yes, uh, one cool thing I did, I used the exact same photo for all of them. Now, if you wanted to take the time to, you know, change up your spaceship model or picture, you could do that. But one thing I did to get some variety while not having to go through that process was I used some distort effects like the Sapphire Distort. And for example, what that did with this one, let's see if we can see it. Just changed up the shape a little bit, made it look a little more wider and stretched it a little bit. There are many distorts you could use, of course, but uh, the Sapphire Distort was pretty handy for this one. And yeah, and so I've got eight different spaceships timed out. Very simple to do. Uh, make sure they're blurred out enough for the shot. And other than that, I mean, we have we've gone through quite a few details that can make up a cyberpunk shot like this. Um, you could go further with many of these. You could add more, you could add like a neon sign if you wanted to. And I mean, ultra glow would be even extra killer for like a neon sign on a brick wall like this. That's one thing I may play around with in the future is trying out that effect, uh, that plugin on a neon sign because I love those designs. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much a little breakdown of this cyberpunk shot and how using action VFX elements, uh, force effects elements really just made things easier, but not just easier, but like better. <laughs> Cause I mean, it would take so long to, I mean, imagine creating, creating that perfect glow that you need with uh, another plugin. It's not really not going to happen without a ton of work, probably, ton of extra layers but yeah or just imagine you know having to film this fog on set and you only have 10 minutes so you've got to get out the you know the the fog machine or you could just throw in some in post and style it how you want it which is what i did here so yeah awesome stuff awesome stuff caleb thank you very much um, I've got I've got a ton of uh, I've got a ton of questions. Me too. Ton of questions. Me too. It's, go ahead. I mean, this is like there, there's so uh, there's so many different elements in here. There's so many little small things. Um, I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest. I've watched this through about 15 times before I even noticed the spaceships uh, in the background. <laughs> it's like that came as a little shock for me, uh, and that's I think that's what I like about. Uh, you know these types of shots they've they've obviously been given uh, a lot of love and a, a, it's all the small details that, that build up to to make it um mm -hmm. i'm going to i'm going to start through though with a uh, like a workflow question that's nothing to do with the with the plugins it's more to do with sure. like a, approaching the shot a bit a bit like i uh, ask uh, Danessa as well and and that's about your use of of slap comps um and and more sort of 
like how you use or whether you use slap comps more than things like style frames for example or, or you know what what mm -hmm. you consider the difference between those two yeah so i actually did both for this specific shot um kind of what you're talking about with style guides or um you know just going through we find reference images putting together a mood board something that we do a lot here at action vfx especially on the creative team which we make mood boards for whatever we're working on whether it's a vfx shot or a an ad or you know, really anything that could benefit from it. And so yeah, a mood, a mood board was part of this pre-production pipeline, which was going through, uh, you know, looking through some images on the internet, uh, combining those with other things. You could, you could copy over some, you know, color, color palettes, some, uh, you know, some keys from the um, color codes, or you could also storyboard this out. This shot really didn't need a storyboard because of the uh, the movement was so simple. But yeah, and then for the uh, the slap comp, the, the test comp, it was really just making sure before we shot this that there wasn't anything we were overlooking. Um, and just also to point out, you may want to, like if you were shooting a shot like this, adds in some tracking markers. But I really wanted to try it out without any tracking markers on the face or neck just to see how well the power mesh would do. And I wasn't disappointed. So, I mean, and you may even want to, with some of these um, cybernetic um, implants, to have a mixed media, like have some of that drawn on her face. But uh, I just want to show how you, you could do it all in post if you wanted to and make that fully customizable as well. It's cool. Amazingly cool. Yeah, I mean, you're, uh, you're watching Boris Effects live. Uh, get your questions in uh, for... Uh, for Caleb and Danasa from Action VFX, we've just been watching a couple of their VFX shop breakdowns. There's still a little bit of time left to uh, to get your questions in. Um, I'm going to go through my my pile of questions. So uh, let's let's keep let's keep uh, moving on, shall we? Um, another one I've got was it was actually it's not so much a, a question as more a kind of observation uh that i hope you can sort of fill out a little bit more which was your use of the uh the gore textures for almost like kind of backgrounds for plopping in those mm -hmm. those elements before you put them on the body uh you know why what sort of advantage do you see with using those textures uh over just placing those uh, other sort of mechanical elements directly on the on the body yeah, that's a good question because that's one thing I learned from uh, the slap comp, which was it's really hard to do that without some type of way to blend them in, right? Because you're just going to be slapping on whatever it is, you know, whatever design you come up with, you're going to be slapping it on there and you're left to blend it into the skin. And so, especially if it's all in post, right? So that's something I learned in my tests and pre-production, which was, okay, I went I need some way to blend it. And luckily we had the products that I needed just for that. And the way they're set up, especially with the EXR passes, I mean, tons of mobility in the, in your setup there to really do whatever you want in terms of the blending and lighting and reflections and everything. I mean, that's, that's something that, um, I noticed about the, the action VFX, um, library as opposed to, to some of the other stock libraries is the fact that you do have the raw materials available to you you're not kind of working at a, a sort of disadvantage just with 8-bit starting points and, and and that's it you've got the you know you've got the choice mm -hmm. of going you know all the way from you know just just a, the the hd element if you want to all the way up to the, the raw shot uh, which which gives you a lot of flexibility when it comes to to VFX where, you know, you don't quite know where you're going to go with or what sort of elements you're going to need for a particular shot sometimes before you, we are starting out. Yeah, exactly. We have some things like this, we can offer an EXR and PNG versions, but then some things that everything that we shoot, we will definitely, if it's feels necessary, we'll include that raw red file and that can be, you know, up to 6k or who knows, depends on the product, but we want to give artists the flexibility that if they need that, they can have it. Or if they just want everything already done 
um, for them in terms of the you know the keying and all of that we have that as well for you to download and if you purchase them you have access to all of that so yeah we try to cover all the bases for all types of artists to give them just the flexibility cool and um yeah we've we've still got uh, a couple of action vfx certificates to give away uh, as well on this stream so if you haven't uh, gone over to borisfxlive.com and joined in the competition you have a uh, a very very limited amount of time to do so now so uh, so hop on over uh, and you might be a a lucky winner today uh, i'm going to let brian uh, come in and ask the next question while i rearrange my pile of uh, of papers great um first of all um great job caleb um great presentation too love love your style um love your uh, your your silky smooth dulcet tones on on the stream so great great job great job walking through uh, a really beautiful comp um i a really interesting question from the audience about like not software related or not even vfx related but hardware related curious as to like what what rig you're kind of using and what do you recommend for someone who kind of wants to get into vfx it's always that hard question but what would kind of um like an entry level setup would be they they mentioned thinking about like an eight core cpu with a with a gpu with something around 16 gigs of memory does that seem like a a kind of good entry level machine to do this type of work yeah so i'll start off by saying i am not an expert on that but from my experience i've worked with quite a range of you know uh, from basic laptops up to super high quality um, setups we have here at the action vfx office um, 16 gigs uh, will work for a starter setup uh, you know anything higher than that is going to be great especially when you're working with anything over 1080p when you're getting into some 4Ks, especially you know 6K or anything, you're definitely going to want more than 16 gigs, 32 or 64 if possible. But 16 gigs of uh, RAM will definitely get you um, some things going on. Uh, uh, and then in terms of gra graphics card, that's always changing. I can't keep up with you know, all of the graphics cards, and that's kind of it's become a crazy world out there. So I cannot give any expert opinions on that. If you can, Danasa, go ahead. I don't know if you, if you know any more about that, but uh, yeah. Well, sorry, I'm also not, an, oh, sorry. No, no, go ahead. I had uh, you on so mute, I was I'm, apologizing. Oh, no, 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 it's okay. Uh, I'm also not an expert in computer stuff, uh, but yeah, I also started, uh, you know, like a long, long time ago uh, doing VFX on actually my mom's laptop <laughs> so there wasn't even like a i don't think that i didn't think there was a, like a graphic card in the laptop it was just it was uh but yeah I, I also started started out with you know like a really small laptop and then you know start building up as i uh, go along but yeah uh yeah so i'm not i'm not a computer expert but yeah it's really great to you know start with what you have first and then start uh building up I, I, I completely agree. I, I think, you know, I always tell people, use what you have to start, you know? I mean, it's obviously not going to be the fastest, right? And, and as you kind of do this more and more, you can get really frustrated with an entry-level machine. But there's really, at this point, I mean, you know, the the laptops that my kids use to play Roblox on, you could you could comp a 1080 movie on, right? Which is like nuts. So I, I, I like to point out that there's really no kind of um, barrier anymore, right? And especially with, with you know, stock elements like Action VFX have, right? Have access to this high quality footage to play around with. There's so much stuff on the internet you can download um, and and kind of use. It's really, I, I tell people dive in, you know, get, get what you can get. Like specifically the question about the eight core with the 16, um 16 gigs of ram on the gpu like yes right <laughs> like start out start out with that um use it you know and then you'll probably like find limitations like caleb said if you if you hit above the you know the 2k 4k limit it's going to be slow and your render times um maybe a little slow but but nothing like definitely nothing that you can't deal with um good to point out sapphire's gpu accelerated for metal and cuda Right. So, you know, if you have a, if you're using a Mac, right, with a with an AMD GPU, GPU you're going to get acceleration 
um, on the metal platform. If you have a big, huge NVIDIA card, any of the new the new RTX, the new AMP cards, um, you're going to take advantage of that CUDA acceleration as well. Um, and all Boris FX products are GPU accelerated across the board, whether it's with OpenCL, whether it's with Metal, or whether it's um, CUDA. You know, we we kind of get it, right? It's like um, it's all about creating a beautiful image, but if it's the renders are unbelievably long, then you know people aren't going to be able to use it in today's production environment. So always thinking about speed. I had one other question, and I'm sorry I'm not keeping up with the chat right now, but someone actually asked, like, like if you think you could, um, this is for Caleb, if you could tackle this shot, like, without power mesh, like, um, would it be possible? Um, and what would that, what would that kind of look like? Yeah, uh, it's, it's scary to think about. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would probably <laughs> do as much as I could in camera, honestly, like, because it would just be a nightmare to try to track that on a surface like that without power mesh. So I would probably just try to make as many of the effects in camera as I could and then add on, uh, to track as best you can, anything that you need to track in terms of if you want something animated, uh, but otherwise, yeah, good luck. Yeah. I, I used to do a lot of, uh, of hand mesh warping. Um, that's as about as fun as it sounds. Uh, it, it wasn't wow. it wasn't really really a good use of of time. But yeah, you you sort of have to try to put points in uh, on the on the face markers on the face to to kind of get anywhere close to to what you were going for. But um, yeah, power mesh a lot more fun. Yeah. What, one of the things I noticed that is that both of you used very very fine meshes for your for your power mesh. Uh, was was that an artistic choice or just a uh, a sort of um, a happen happenstance chance of of choice? Uh, I think it just happened. <laughs> but yeah, okay, power mesh is really enough. really yeah, power mesh is really powerful. In fact, um, uh, the the best thing about power mesh in, is uh, I actually joked about this is that uh, instead of if you don't have tracking markers, you can actually add in tracking markers in post using power mesh because of how good it is in tracking <laughs> meshes. <laughs> so if you don't have tracking markers, you can actually add in one or like several. And then you but can yeah. send it to someone else to paint those out. That'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. No. More, more make work type of job, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Caleb, yeah. I, I noticed that you were using quite a lot of um like un probably underused um filters and effects in there as well do you, do you have any kind of other little hidden gems ones that you kind of go to time and time again but you want to keep secret mm. except to to the internet Ooh, good question let me browse to my effects panel and not share my screen before i tell you uh <laughs> No, um, I do. It would just be hard to think of them off the top of my head because it depends on the shot. But uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I'm I'm a big a big fan of polar coordinates, and it, it's something that mm -hmm. I I use a lot for lots of different things. Um, but the the edge colorize trick that you did with text, yes. Um, I thought that was great. Yeah, I, I haven't done that. I thought it was excellent. <laughs> Me neither. Seeing that one. <laughs> I loved it. I was like, oh, that's smart. <laughs> right? Like, I like that. Um, <laughs> Bit the shot perfectly, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think um, we, we've we've done a couple of the, the breakdowns. Let's take a I want to I want to have a look a bit more at um, some of the new stuff that's on Action VFX and talk about that. Uh, but I mm -hmm. think I'm going to give away another prize. Gonna give away a little prize if we're ready for giving away a little prize. I'm always ready, Ben. Okay. I'm uh, ready. Well, let's let's give away. Should we give away another gift certificate? Okay, you got it. He says. Okay, here we go. So we got one more gift certificate going out to Ricky Elliott. So Action VFX two hundred dollar gift certificate to use on any 
of the actual VFX products that you want to. So congratulations, Ricky. Well done. Thank you very much. If you're in the chat, say hello. And what else do we have? Let's uh, let's roll the tumbola. Give away one more prize. Um, here's oh. me rolling the tumbola. Congratulations, Ricky, again. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, can get, congratulations, <laughs> Cat, Cat Creates. Or cre uh, creates? Creates. Cat Creates. There we go. You have won a, a one-year subscription to Mocha Pro. So, yeah, we've seen Mocha Pro throughout this stream uh, being used in actually a number of, of really cool, uh, interesting ways by, by both of our, our guests today. So congratulations, Kat. Uh, we will be in touch uh, over the next couple of days um, so that we will be uh, be giving you your voucher right there. Oh, oh, and do you know what? That's sorry, me sorry, going, but... I'm number one. <laughs> that's, that's... <laughs> we, we call that a placeholder. <laughs> With a you big number a one. Placeholder. Nice. I like it. I like nice. it. Well, should we, should we look at a little bit more? Because um, we, we've looked at a few of the action VFX um uh, elements stock elements it might be worthwhile just just talking a little bit more um about what we have and what you know what's what's available on 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 the site so if we if we head on over to the yeah. site and uh, maybe maybe Caleb you can you can talk a little bit about what's uh, what we've got going on here oh yeah of course so if we go over to the products page, I can show you just some of the variety that we have to offer first. I mean, first off is the new crowds. Um, and if you want to jump into one of those, I can show a little more detail about these new brand new products from Action VFX. So as you can see in the features panel, um, it's going to list like these are pre-keyed. These are, there's 330 first of all per collection. So we have the crowds. Uh, sports crowds and the concert crowds. Um, we have unique actors. We have, yeah, that 2K, 4K, high bit rate. Um, we have multiple actions per clip that are perfectly timed up for you to replicate to each person in a huge crowd and to not be a humongous pain. We timed them. We took the, the pain upon ourselves to record these just right to uh, deliver these in a way that are easier to edit than uh, any other way we could think of. So we have tons of angles, every angle you should need. We have sitting, standing. We have a top camera, a low camera, a straight on camera, uh, which should fit any shot that you would ever have come across your plate. Um, you can download a single clip or you can download the entire collection. Uh, we have that availability for most of the collections on our website to uh, whether you need, you know, just one or you need, you know, you know you're gonna need a bunch. So you might as well go ahead and download the whole collection. But uh, yeah, these are the, cl the cr uh, crowds, excuse me, and we are just happy to bring them to the world, uh, whether it's from COVID issues or just for anyone to be able to access them and not just not just the top studios in the world, but anyone who needs crowd assets can use these. Really cool, really cool. I mean, like, I, you know, trying to wrap your head around to do this, obviously with a some sort of software application right something like a massive or i mean not not for the faint of heart right um so having these elements as, as stock footage is a is a great way to uh to kind of do this fast and easily mm -hmm. yeah and then i can show a little more variety of our full library if you want to head back out to the products page i mean if you look on the left side there we have our broad categories uh, you saw some from the gore collection um, we have some other nasty stuff in there that you can use to create some wild shots we have uh yeah this debris and impact which is very useful for creating not only some you know super exciting like explosion type shots but also some subtleties as well so and then if you go down to let's see explosions and that's, that's definitely a, a action intensive collection there uh, we have all kinds of explosions. We have glass elements, which are fairly new. Um, these are very fun to shoot, and we have a huge variety here as well, as well as a free, a free pack of just glass textures. And on the left, we also have a, a whole free category. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on, is... hold on while I download my free texture here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh... <laughs> 
No, we have we have hundreds of free collections. If you go to that, just click on that free tab for me, and I'll show you exactly how many we have. It's right above glass there on the left panel, or right there. Yeah, either one. Uh, if you're not used to using stock uh, assets like ours, try out some free ones and see just how easy they are to use. We have so many free uh, free versions already to download. So all you have to do is visit the website and check it out for yourself. And I mean, I still use these in my shots to this day, just because they're free doesn't mean they're not useful. I can tell you that. So uh, they're good to have no matter I, what. I've got some some firm favorites in there as well. Um, yeah, don't, don't you worry. That's uh, I've used used some of these on uh, in different ways on many shots. Awesome. Good to hear. Good to hear. We've got, yeah, gun effects, which are some of the most fun to use. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you a little, little bit about shooting. The cannon blast was a really fun process. It's uh, not one you're going to use all the time, but that was a very fun um, <laughs> product to shoot because we, of course, got real can uh, cannons that uh, are very accurate to get the best quality, and it was wa pretty wild. We had to build like a humongous green screen to uh, fit these in the frame. Where does one get a cannon? <laughs> like, is there a, um, yeah. is there a, is there a cannon? Is that an we industry have, secret? <laughs> yeah. in, uh, we have a lot of connections here at Action VFX uh, to get some crazy <laughs> products, but yeah. That's amazing. So oh, this, this is why Action VFX is based in international waters then. <laughs> <laughs> really cool stuff. Yeah, we have a lot of good things for finishing finishing off shots like this op, this new optics collection, which is you know, lens flares. I almost wanted to work. I tried to work in uh, a couple of lens flares in my shot, but with uh, it came a little too distracting. But usually it's not. It's great to add in a lens flare on some <laughs> things that aren't as <laughs> already so visual. But uh, yeah, I really love the new. Oh, uh, don't don't clouds. talk to me about lens flares. In fact, do talk to me about <laughs> lens flares. We'll book a couple of hours. <laughs> do a whole new stream based on lens flares but uh oh please yeah uh, we've had a ton of those energy yeah. elements yeah. yeah that's the energy of great reactions that i use those. i've also got a great tutorial uh recently that Danasa did on a youtube channel based on um, the scarlet witch effects you see it there Using energy assets, really great fun tutorial. I like the great job with that, Danasa. But it was great to watch for me. Uh, yeah, the energy effects are just so fun to use, aren't they? I mean, yeah, there's so many usage for the energy burst. Yeah, so many things you can do. There's energy burst. There's energy balls. There's the portals. So many things. You can do yeah, so and the portals are free. You guys have so such great content on actionvfx.com. All the tutorials, um, like a mini, mini VFX um, education on here, all for free. So, really cool. Love, love you. Let people download the project files. Would love to mm -hmm. prick your brain later about how you're getting that nice looping video on there. That's nice and light. <laughs> right? <laughs> love, love to love to see that in in use on some other websites. So that, that's really cool. Um, yeah, really really cool stuff. You guys are always doing some nice topical tutorials and and obviously everything is always super high quality so congrats on that that's some that's some good stuff oh, thank you and right back at you and one more thank plug you. for our youtube channel Danasa's shot that he demoed today will be appearing on our yeah. youtube channel tomorrow so if you want a more yeah. in-depth step-by-step -step guide on Danasa's um, shot definitely subscribe to our youtube yeah. channel it's coming out tomorrow it's going to be just creating it from scratch and how you can follow that along. Yep. Excellent. What he said. <laughs> 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 yeah, there's, there's, there's a ton of, a ton of great stuff, a ton of great stuff there. It's, uh, it's, I would definitely recommend you subscribe to, uh, to that YouTube channel right after you subscribe to this one. So <laughs> uh, there was a, there was a couple of, a uh, couple of people who said, uh, yeah, we, we, we've just joined the stream. What do we miss? So, um, yeah, you've, you've missed quite a lot, actually. Uh, yeah, we've, we've, we've had uh, uh, Caleb and Dinesh over from Action VFX breaking down a couple of, uh, couple of really cool VFX shots and uh, 
showing how used how to use like the action VFX elements with the Boris FX uh, plugins to, to try and bring everything together. Uh, if you have missed everything up till now, don't worry. We will be replaying this on our YouTube channel and on the Boris FX website. Uh, it should be up there very soon. If you're watching a replay, well, you know that it's up there now. So, uh, so be a time traveller like the people watching the replays. Um, we don't have any more time for, uh, for me saying any more nonsense, unfortunately. So we're going to uh, give away some more prizes, I think. How does, how does that sound, Brian? Are we, are we up? So, it sounds great. You ready? I, I think so. I think so. Let's, uh, let's give it a go. So, ah, uh, with our third and final Action VFX gift card, $200 value. Congratulations, Stacy Auckland. Well done, Stacy. Congratulations on winning the prize. It's a great prize. You've seen some of the stuff. Now you can choose which ones you want to, uh, to go and use in your next project. Well done, Stacy. Coming up. Oh, the annual subscription for Boris Continuum has gone to Isaac Murray. Well done, Isaac. There's uh, yeah over 200 and 250 different effects. It's hard to keep up with how many effects there are um, with uh, with Boris Continuum, including the Cinematographer's Toolkit. So uh, congratulations, Murray. Well done. And the big one, the Boris FX Suite, the 12 month subscription to the Boris FX Suite, everything we make including Mocha Pro that we've seen today, Sapphire that we've seen today, Continuum, uh, Silhouette, and of course, Optics, all in one friendly bundle available for a monthly or annual subscription. The annual subscription of this one goes to Chris Brown. Congratulations, Chris. You have won the Boris Effect Suite. Well done. Nice one. If you didn't win a prize today, don't worry, we have many more coming up in our next live stream, which is going to be in just a couple of weeks' time. Uh, we have, we've have we just finished our, uh, our little schedule of uh, weekly live streams, so we're, we're kind of going to take a little break next week, and we're going to come back bigger and stronger on the 26th of May, where we're going to be doing a, uh, a nice little roundtable discussion with uh, with Wacom. So that's uh, that's going to be something a little bit different than what we've done today, uh, and I'm I'm looking forward to it as well. It's going to be a going to be a nice fun one and pace. Oh, uh, what else do we have coming up? Uh, of course, we have anything to anything to help me out here, Brian. Uh, hold on. What else what do else we have we? coming? We've up got some stuff. On. Yeah. Um, Let's bring up the schedule that I, we work very That's, hard be on. Nice. There we go. That'd be nice. Look at that. Yeah, coming up in in June, we have another live stream which is going to be Photoshop for editors with Scott Kelby. That's uh, that's going to be a uh, a great one there from uh, Scott Kelby from Kelby One. And on June the twenty third, uh, we're going to have uh, Dan Smith doing Mocha Pro and Silhouette or Nuke Artists. So all of these are, are coming up. If you want to see our full schedule, always head over to BorisEffectsLive.com uh, and you'll see what's, uh, what's coming up next. Uh, what you can also do is you can go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. And if you haven't done so already, hit the notifications bell as well because uh, that will be very, very handy for letting you know uh, when we have a new uh, live stream uh, coming up. I want to say thank you very much to... Uh, oh, actually, I'm not going to say thank you just yet because we've got the Boris Effects uh, YouTube channel here. Tons and tons of presets... Uh, not presets. Tons and tons of free tutorials uh, for all of our products. Uh, we also have on the uh, Boris Effects Learn YouTube channel a number of different... Um, uh, tutorial series so this is where you want to go a little bit more in depth oh that's me again great hello um so we have uh, our mocha essentials course so if you're just wanting to start out in mocha then this is the place to go so this is going to take you from mocha a to z so all from the very sort of start of um you know how mocha thinks about uh tracking how mocha thinks about a shot 
all the way through to some of the, the power mesh stuff. So uh, yeah, go to Boris FX Learn YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button, and there's there's more series coming up in the near future. Uh, you'll also find all of that stuff on the BorisFX.com website as well, where you can search by product, series, or uh, or level. So it's a very uh, very nice usable uh, interface there. Excellent stuff, including yes, the new Mortal Kombat feature film title design uh, by our own John Dickinson. So if you're into uh, to 3D and title designing, then this is the place to go. This is a, a, an awesome series that uh, really goes in depth about stuff that uh, I know uh, very little about, and it was absolutely fascinating. Um, so watch that. Watch one it. thing. One thing I'll say is, as you guys saw in the schedule, you know we have pretty much the next couple live streams set up. We're going to be looking at Photoshop for editors. We're going to be doing a roundtable with Wacom. Uh, we're going to be checking out Nuke and Silhouette. Um, sorry, <laughs> sorry, Mocha and Silhouette and Nuke, right? But at that point, it is wide open. So let us know what you would like us to focus on. We're open to all ideas. We definitely have some some things percolating, but we'd love to hear what you guys would like us to do. Uh, we love doing these type of live streams. We're going to try and keep it to every two weeks on Wednesdays at two. So let us know in the chat if you have anything you'd like us to see, product you'd like us to focus on, or any type of other areas. Um, and we will add it to the summer schedule. That's my pitch. Help us out. Yeah, right? it's good. <laughs> Give us some Please. Ideas. <laughs> yes, cool. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, we'll we'll take it away. I want to say uh, say thank you very much to uh, our, our guest today from Action UF, uh, VFX, uh, Dinesha Asad, Caleb uh, Friday, and of course Ryan Fox in Mission Control. I want to say thank you for uh, for joining us for this live stream. Yeah. Thank you, gentlemen. Great work. Great work. Really, really thank cool you for stuff. Having absolutely, thank you. absolutely stunning. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Great. And thank you very much for watching. Um, we will see you again very soon. If you haven't already done so, I'm going to give you one last op uh, opportunity to hit the like button for me. Uh, I very much appreciate it. Costs you nothing and helps us out a lot. But, uh, but for now, my name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effect. And we'll see you again at Boris Effects Live very, very soon. See you, everyone.